For instance, my wrist check right now, my EDC watch for the day, has been and will be for tomorrow because I am loving it, a now discontinued Deep Blue Master 1000 automatic dive watch. A competitive option to this watch I'm reviewing right now, by the way. And we'll talk about it. We'll do some comparison and contrast when we get to the details. This is in sunburst blue with an electric blue strap and silicone. Super high quality. Seiko NH35 movement. I'm very impressed with this piece. Very. And it's an auto. Okay, so it made me happy today putting it on. I love it. And I was going to put a black NATO on. I was like, I don't know if I really want that much blue. But my dive computer is blue. You know, it's, to it's like neon blue. My Sunto. D4, so I was like, yeah, what's diff? I st and I've worn that as an EDC watch, and it's cool. It's a big old dive computer. I just love it. I love it when someone comes up to me, too, with that Sunto, and they go, man, that's a big watch. And then I go, it's not a watch. It's a dive computer. <laughs> that's an ultimate face. It's like, oh, okay. It's funny. But it's neon blue. And so I'll probably leave this strap on. Anyways, it's made me happy. Here's the second part to the intro, though. How much do you pay to get that feeling? To get the feeling, and I'm not really concentrating on the deep blue, whatever. I mean, this one on the wood right here, sitting next to the T82. How much? 7,000, 6,000, 4,000? I've been hitting watch info really hard for the last three years. I've learned a ton, watched plenty of videos, read lots of stuff online, even magazines. And I will never sign off on guys who act like you have to pay like thousands to get a real watch. That they act like a $300 watch is good for people who don't know a lot about watches. I see that sentiment a lot. I don't agree with it and I don't like it. And I fight against it. They act like, hey, if you get a $300 watch, you're kind of an idiot in so many words and when, when you really learn about watches then you can go out and spring for you know a four thousand dollar breitling or something and then you can be a true orologist and i don't like that my focus is both as an enthusiast and as a reviewer and i am reviewing watches for now who knows what the future holds we'll see is three hundred dollars or less i'm saying that in the wrvs and this watch qualifies and i'm going to review right now so how much do you have to pay to make yourself happy and get away from your problems? Uh, I can tell you right now, it, it'll be easily $300 or less. Unless, for whatever reason, you just cannot find joy in, I don't know, a mass-produced watch. You need something really eclectic, okay? They're, you know, second cool, if you just throw the second cool flag, I get it. I will never understand why you would spend thousands to get that, because that money could, in my estimation, be spent better in other places. How much do you think it should be worth? I did a poll, by the way, with TM Peers, and I can't remember if it was in a video. I think it was in Twitter, and I think the answer was $200 was their threshold. So if they paid more than $200, they felt like they're really spending a lot on watches. Very interesting. Although I will say probably 97, 98%, I know it's an insane majority of TM Peers hate watches. Look at the views on the videos. That just bears it out. Only the the elite and the the super studs like you guys like them. We're we're in the minority and in this particular audience. Most guys will strap on a G-Shock and call it good, and they'll never visit the watch issue again. By the way, that was me. That was that was me for decades. So I, I'm guilty as charged. That was me. But I finally seen the light. I don't know what hit me. I don't know. We got, got some spell cast on me. But I'm digging it. This has made me happy. So what's the price point for you? Is it, and here we go with the specifics on this watch, is it the $300 Momentum M50? Dude, that's a lot of money. I ain't gonna say that it isn't. But again, in the watch world, it's considered chump change. They don't think that's much at all. This might change your value formulation though. This is a quartz watch, not an automatic. A lot of guys in the watch world will say, wow, $300 for a quartz movement, that's pretty pricey. I will kind of agree with that, actually. And the reason I will is because there's so many great quartz dive watch options. Heck, forget other types. For well under $300. Heck, under $100, you can get an amazing quartz dive watch. You can. I've reviewed some, and I want to review some more. 
And this one is just, I think, I paid $140 for the Seiko Solar Powered SNE 391 reviewed. But last time I checked, it was like $100. Let me put it side so you can see. That's a competitive option. Still in inventory. I love this watch. It's so cool. This is what I'm saying, though. I mean, does this make me any more happy than this? Not me. Not me. But I, I won't say this is a bad watch or not worth it but it in some people's valuation i'm not sure if they would sign off on a 300 dollar quartz watch we'll see we'll see again my audience is a little bit different <clears throat> not really watch guys i mean you guys are watching this video it'll be just be an interesting discussion below if you'd pay that much money there are different variations of this watch the momentum m50 they have a black ion and they have a blue version and of course this white version. I don't know if it's still in production, if it's been discontinued. Momentum does that as do all smaller watch manufacturers. Heck, even the big ones do. I'm finding it very difficult to get the watch reviews out and the audience supporting the flow of watch reviews in a timely fashion before they are discontinued. So it is what it is. A lot of times I want to review some watches like this one. The, the Master 1000 by Deep Blue, and it's been discontinued. I don't know what to tell you. It's just the flow of how we go in TMP. Yeah, so different variations. You can check them out. I think they have them in Amazon. I'll put links there. Use them if you can. It gives me like 2.3 cents to go out and buy more of this stuff. Incidentally, you guys might like this. Join Patreon. And I'm asking Patreon guys to do about 5 bucks a month. More if you can do it. Those donors who do five bucks or more are going to get giveaways, including watches that I have bought for review. Maybe this one, because I buy them. They're not donated to me. They're not given to me right now. Maybe I'll do loaners in the future, but right now we're buying them. So if I keep them, I dive them. I haven't dove this one, but if I dive them, I may sign them and I just give them away to long time, not just one month, two month, three month, but long time Patreon, five dollars or more a month supporters. And you can have a watch. I'll just sign it and give you the box and everything. Go knock yourself out and be happy and forget your problems for a while. <laughs> I, I hope you do find joy like I do. And by the way, I get confused on Momentum's names on their on their dive watches. Like the last one I reviewed was, I thought it was an M1, but then I just looked on their website tonight and they're calling it the Deep Six. It was that big one and I didn't really like it. I didn't like the handset on it. I'll roll in some footage now of the tabletop review. It was had a small face. It was just very complex and not a clean presentation of a diver. I I just couldn't warm up to it. So I got rid of those. I just didn't like them at all. This one I like better, the Momentum M50. It is still kind of a larger dive watch, which I love. The case is 44 millimeters across. It's 13 millimeters thick. And it's 52 millimeters lug to lug and they are angled downwards 316 l bead blasted stainless steel case i love that really good looking matte stainless steel case it's nice to break away from the polished stuff right i mean the sne 391 is polished and i don't have a problem with it but it's just nice to see something different one thing you'll find out though if you haven't already is this matte finished case will show wear markings a lot more you're still going to get them with a polish finish like this one does, but it just seems like it's not as noticeable. But here it'll scratch and sometimes it'll be shiny underneath and so it may be more noticeable. For me, all wear and tear is that we get on our watches is just cool. That makes me even happier when it gets character. 4.2 ounces with this particular, they call it hyper rubber band. It's basically a rubber NATO strap has kind of uh, it's horizontal markings on it, or I should mold it in, striations. Really adjustable this band is. I really like it. It's UV resistant. It has some steel, black and steel keepers on it, which is different. I don't mind the strap as far as a synthetic rubber strap goes. I did make a strap video. I don't know if I'm going to post it or redo it, but in that video I said I pretty much love NATO straps and leather. Here's a Nate chronograph. This had, this is a strap that came with it. Look at that. That is a good looking strap. Leather or NATO is what I like. Check this, dude. Here comes another Momentum product. This is a keeper. This is an inventory. It's a Torpedo 44. 
I peeled off its strap. I think it was a rubber strap, a, a good rubber strap. Actually, I dove with it, but I just get tired of sweating under those things. I know this one's silicone. I've been kind of sweating under this one, but I really love the color. So it's everything goes in the hopper. Once you shake it all out, is it worth it? I still may put a NATO on this. I ain't saying I won't, but I'm just enjoying the blue right now. So it makes me happy for now. That gray NATO looks sick on this. It really does. I just bought this strap in Amazon. This one, this gray NATO with black and keepers. And I really love the Torpedo 44. I showed you multiple variations of that. The Momentum or Sam Moritz Watch Company. That's the name of it. Really good size comparison against these two. And I told you about the Torpedo 44 that I liked its face and its larger presentation. 44 millimeters and here we go 44 millimeters again there is a difference in the faces though and I might as well cover it now because it does bother me I'm not gonna lie on the right the momentum m50 is guilty of something that I'm talking more and more about in my dive watch reviews maybe other watch reviews as well and that is it does have a bezel but it also has a chapter ring that takes up so much face space See that? So basically we end up with a 28 millimeter time presentation, which I find annoying. I don't like that. I don't like it. The Torpedo 44 doesn't have that problem. I mean, this is not a huge, you know, much larger face, but it is bigger. This is a very tiny watch face. So I don't like how they did it. I would have preferred to have bigger hands, get rid of this inner chapter ring and just do applied markings on the M50. How about you? That's that's what I like to see. And I I see this across the line in most dive watches. That they have really, a really small face display. And then a big fat case, a big fat bezel. And it's just annoying. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, and I, it took me a while to arrive to that. If you look at some of my earlier dive watch reviews, kind of like on the Citizen Pro Master Diver, I like that watch. I did say it took me a while to warm up to it. But I rubber banded right back to where I was, not liking it. <laughs> that's just where I'm at it is I do love the white color in the M50 because it seems to offset that small time presentation it looks bigger than it is in the face I really love the high contrast black hands on this thing too very excellent and I'm going to show you the loom on this before we quit I won't do it quite yet and I think that whole back uh, face is illuminated so you will see basically shadow hands let's look at the seconds hand its registration not exactly perfect as are most quartz watches if that really bugs you you might want to upgrade to an auto there's some great auto watches I'm wearing one showing it to you I love the minutes hand that it's a sword presentation I can take the hour hand as basically an arrow presentation. Eh, I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm more and more loving Flieger hands, i.e. the sword. They're just clean eh, or something straight like I showed you on the Master 1000. That's just my own preference and that's another reason I deep sixed the Deep Six by Momentum. I didn't like their hands. Hate syringe hands. I don't like cathedral hands. Sorry, I don't. Not on dive watches. Then we got a Cyclops date window, which is good and bad. The bad is it's really hard to put on a crystal protector. Although this one is sapphire. Never mind, you don't need a crystal protector on this one. It's sapphire crystal, so no big deal. So the downside might be look. Some guys don't like it. Although the Rolex guys don't seem to mind. They, they dig it. Very legible date, though, with the Cyclops. For once, I mean, most die watches you just cannot even see it. This one's small but legible on the SNE391. You can see it. Negative reverse display. Let's look at the lettering. This is really important, too, I think, for everyone. M50 Mark II Professional, water resistant to 500 meters, screw down crown, of course. Simple chapter ring. I don't mind that at all. I just Wish that it was, uh, you know, the hands were bigger and the time display, once again, it was larger. 120 click precise bezel. We don't have grasping grooves around the entire circumference of the bezel like you do on this one. Better of option. I like this one better. I mean, not just for diving, but for EDCing and just timing functions by which 
Oh, by the way, I use tonight on this watch. I love it how quick and easy using a timing bezel is. I was cooking. I was just like, yeah, I'll just set my bezel, dude. Yeah, it made me happy. Watch dork I am, I guess. Ceramic bezel, I believe, on the M50. It's good looking. I like the markings on it. We have an illuminated pip at the 12 o'clock position. Look at the crown. Insignia. Screw down, of course. Quartz movement, they say, will last 8 to 10 years in the M50. So it is an expensive quartz movement, but it's a very high efficiency quartz movement. I think it's a Miyota, which is Citizen. And it's, you saw down there, it's Japanese movement. One thing I've noticed too, sometimes when you set the time, let's pretend I'm at the 12 o'clock position with the seconds hand, you push in and the minute hand will jump. This one doesn't do it, it's real precise, at least in this version. Bead blasted case again. Let's look at the back. I'm just gonna lift this up a little bit. Would you guys prefer to have this in a bracelet, a rubber strap, or NATO? I bet you guys will say NATO is what I'm thinking. Pretty simple case back too. For a $300 watch, I'm disappointed to be honest with you. It's bead blasted, that's cool. Screw down, that's cool. All the information is there. I don't have a problem with any of that, but there's just no adornment. I've shown you some others where, dude, it's it looks good. If it's a diver, let's let's see some dive stuff on it. Again, we'll look at some competitive options here in just a second. The strap, again, we talked about. Uh, I didn't cover the clasp. It is just a single stainless steel black and clasp or I, black ion plated, perhaps. And then let me just show you how it drapes across my seven and a half inch wrist. That it wears good. That is a good looking dive watch, especially in white. Again, I just wish the face was bigger. Again, wait for a competitive option. I'll show it to you what, exactly what I'm talking about. I have a 7.5 inch wrist and I have kind of a flat wrist on top. I mean, this portion right here. So it's not cylindrical. So I can wear this 52 millimeter lug width, no problem. That might be why I gravitate towards larger watches. I don't dig the small watch thing at all. I'm not a fan. 500 meter water resistance, once again. Good looking. So here's, by the way, is another Momentum product. I haven't officially reviewed this, but I've shown it as a cast member in a lot of videos. This is a Momentum Flatline 42. Also kind of expensive. So it's a Field Flieger style watch, very flat, hence the name. About 200 bucks is what we paid for that. Sapphire Crystal, same type of very simple case back. Very disappointed, actually. I did say in my earlier WRVs, I don't really care what the case back is. I've changed. I, I, if I'm paying something, I want some decoration. And what really changed me are the Wegners and the Victorinoxes and the AV8 watches. Those are adorned so well, and they are very inexpensive. Every watch manufacturer should do it. Here comes the competitive option. And actually, it's just a variation of the one I'm wearing. So I showed you this Momentum Master 1000. Again, an automatic watch for about 250 so that is 50 bucks cheaper than this one, and it's a very high quality hacking, manual winding, Seiko NH35 movement, and it comes in some amazing colors. And then look at this one. This is a Momentum, I'm sorry, a matte deep blue Master 1000 in white. Now that is what I'm talking about. So if we compare this against the M50, look at the difference in time presentation. This will forever be a cast member because this, in my estimation, is a dive watch that gets it right. Big time display, perfect hands, precise seconds hand. Granted, it's an automatic movement. The date window is tiny and there's no cyclops, hence you pretty much can't read it, usually. Ceramic coated bezel, screw down crown. Look at the case back, dude. So Deep Blue gets it. I mean, it's something. It's a diver. It's serial number. This is a very high quality watch. If you're looking for one, I would right now go out and get a mass, I keep saying master, a deep blue master 1000. Links below. Great watch. And I much prefer this one over that one. Now it's amazing that their case sizes are about the same. It looks like this is a much larger watch, right? About the same. A little bit bigger, not much. This is an orange a strap I put on here. It's not a NATO, and I just really loved it. I, once I put it on, I was like, oh yeah, that thing belongs. Also, a frosted stainless steel case, just like this one. 
comparison and size this one all day long for me i mean yeah it's an automatic but uh dude it's a good automatic and i've warmed up to autos more i just got used to setting them before i wear them it's just the way it is in past reviews i was like it's such a hassle it is it is i'm not gonna say it isn't seiko sne 391 just because i have it torpedo 44 competitive option which between these two would i buy uh I would buy the Torpedo 44, this one, because it is so much less expensive. It's every bit of good as watch as this one, I think. I like its hands uh, just as much. I do like the fatter hands on this one, but the time presentation, the face presentation is better on the Torpedo 44. And let's see if I have another competitive option. Diver, I'm talking. Nothing handy. And I'm already at 23 minutes, so I'm just going to wrap it up. Yeah, three hundred dollars for this. Here's here's where I stand on it. I, it is higher for a quartz watch, but everything else is superb quality on this. It really is. The rubber NATO strap is different. It is a proprietary strap, as far as I know. By momentum, I like that. The face is beautiful. If it had a better time display for me, I would say it'd be worth it. I would just suck it up. It, it would because I like the case the case itself is fine. I can forgive the last lack of serrations on the bezel It's precise sapphire crystal. It's a high quality watch 10-year battery. I can forgive all that, but it's just the face is too small for me say in comment if you think it's worth it uh, Would you buy it and which of all the watches on the table you've seen just in this video? Would you prefer nothing fancy? See ya